What is up, Karatex? In this video, we're going to be customizing the 2017 Ford GT and Forza Horizon 4. If you don't know this car by now, I don't know what to tell you. You're probably living under a rock. It's the most, con most controversial, I guess you could say, because of that V6 uh, engine that they put in it, when all the past Ford GTs have always been V8s, you know, crazy-sounding American V8s. And for the first time ever, they put a V6 twin turbo in this car, which kind of shocked a lot of people and has angered quite some people. Um, some of those people are me. <laughs> I'm not very happy with a V6 change. Um, power's 640 horsepower. I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's not that much of a difference from the old one. Uh, the old one, I think, it's only a 90 horsepower difference. It's not, not that much. The old one has 550 horsepower. And a fun fact to EcoBoost... This one actually gets worse gas mileage than the older one, which I find kind of funny. So, crap ton of years later, well, 12 years later, and worse gas mileage and a V6. I mean, I love the body, don't get me wrong. I mean, the only thing I hate about this car is that engine. I like everything else about it, so. I mean, hopefully there's like an engine swap or something we'll see in the customization option. I still, I've never customized this car, so I'm going to see it with you guys in a few minutes here. So, let's go ahead and start up the uh, engine here. Once we look at the interior, carbon fiber, number two on the door, really nice. Alright, start up the engine. You can see on top of the fact that the real engine sound of real life sounds bad, this one sounds even worse. <laughs> so, this is probably so far my least favorite sounding car in Forza. I'm not even gonna lie, it, it, the sound is just awful, in my opinion. Very, very bad. I, I'd say even the real engine sound sounds better than this one, which is really saying something. Alrighty, so next up what we're going to be doing is doing a, a bone stock top speed run. So this is 100% stock, no upgrades have been done to it at all. Just so you can kind of compare this one to after we uh, fully customize it. Alright, here we go. Alright, not too bad. Topped out at 227, then it kind of backed down once the road became flat to 226. That is very, very impressive. Now, all that mainly is due to the aerodynamics of this car, just insane. And, of course, twin turbos tend to make power um, in the higher end, I guess you could say. I don't know if it's just me, but typically when I see cars with twin turbos, they get crazy top speeds. I mean, maybe it's just the bodies of the car they put them in with the chassis and all that. But I mean, this car is just really impressive. Alrighty, taking a look at the available manufacturer colors here, we have the blue that it was unveiled in. Black, simple stuff here. We have this beautiful dark red, metallic red, very nice. We have the silver, matte black, yellow, gray, and then white. Unfortunately, there's no stripe options here, which I found very shocking. Uh, you, have, you would have to make the stripes yourself in the livery editor, or find somebody else that made a livery with stripes, which I did look, and there's only like two, so... Don't know what to tell you there. Uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna keep it blue. I like to do blue with white stripes, but... I'm just gonna keep it blue. Um, and then here, I was thinking of doing the mirrors like a matte carbon to kind of match, but after, when you look at it completely, then you realize why they have the color there and not just the whole thing carbon it looks really weird so I left it like that stock 
And the only thing I wanted to change here was um, this car does not have the optional carbon wheels as the stock alloy ones. So what I went ahead and did is I just made them uh, matte carbon, that's colossal, matte carbon just like the uh, optional ones. Which I think looks good. And I like this wheel design a little bit better than the carbon ones, uh, in my opinion. So went ahead and applied those there. Alright, next up getting into the real customization here. So you can see that there's no body kit presets, which means this car doesn't have any white body kits or race car kits or anything like that. So next up we're going to go over the conversions and let's see if it has uh, many V8 options or anything like that. And it does not, unfortunately. I thought it would have been really funny to throw a, a V8 in there. It would have been awesome, but unfortunately you can't. And then you have the, um, obviously you can change the drivetrain. You can make it all-wheel drive if you want, but if you know from all the videos I usually do, I always keep it the same drivetrain it came with, so rear wheel drive, it's going to stay that way. Front bumper upgrade, I'm not a fan of that, you have a gloss carbon splitter edition, like up against a matte carbon, with canards, and then a tow hook place in the middle like a bull, it just looks absolutely terrible. I'm not a fan of that. Rear spoiler, you have this giant rear spoiler, it's the same generic wing they use uh, option for all the cars, this one's just a little larger. Not a fan of that at all. I like the active aero spoiler that goes up and down, so we're going to keep that, especially for the top speed run. Alright, engine upgrades, got all the good stuff here. I'm not going to repeat it because I mean, you can pretty much see what each thing does and the horsepower increase. But it's, it's definitely a lot. The one I want to point out here is the turbo, is a tub the turbo upgrade, which I thought was cool. He had 61 horsepower there. And the fly flywheel, he saved 2 pounds there. Next up we got the platform and handling, so you got the um, different suspension options, race, rally, and of course drift. Drift cambers the wheels, I think it's just way too low. Um, the race one is nice, the race is like a, like a quarter inch drop, a little more than a quarter inch. I think it looks really good, so we're gonna do that. Front and rear uh, race anti roll bars. You have the roll cage, which I always show it, but we never put it on there. It just adds weight. Uh, I'm not gonna put that on there. No need for it. And of course, uh, race weight reduction. Save 407 pounds there, so that's crazy. Definitely doing that. Clutch shift time there. Of course, race transmission. Race drive line save five and a half pounds there, not bad. Two way race div. Of course, the tire compound. So you have race. Uh, see, this car didn't come with the race tires, which really surprised me. Horizon race, rally, and then of course, drag. So we're going to be doing the uh, race tire compound. The front tire with stock is 245s, and you can upgrade to 255s or 265s. I'm going to keep it stock up front, and the rear stock are 325s, I think are kind of small, and then 335s, so all the way up to 345. We're going to do the 345s on there. Front rim is a 20 inch, and you can upgrade to the 21. Rear rim size is a 20, you can upgrade to a 21. So these are not staggered. If you want to make them staggered, you can. You can increase the one in the rear and leave the one in the front. The 20, it's up to you. I'm just going to leave it the way it came. Next up, we're going to check how lightweight the stock wheels are. You go here to, this is one of the lightest wheels here. So you can see there's no weight savings there. So obviously that means that the stock wheels are as light as possible. I do think that was an error they made. They thought that the stock ones were the carbon ones. I mean, that's what I'm thinking here, which they're not. They're actually heavier than the carbon ones. So not sure what happened there. But if you prefer this wheel design, you don't have to change it. And if there's a bunch of new wheels added into the game recently, if you guys want to see that, I'll put it at the end of the video, so we don't have to see here going through wheels. And I'll put it at this angle, so you can see how each one looks in the car. So you'll be able to see all the wheels they added recently in the new update, and also how they look on the car, so it's a plus, but I'll put that at the end. Alright, that looks like it's everything. Let's see how much it is. 61.9, not bad. We're down over 400 pounds. We're up about 200 and well, almost 300 horsepower. Uh, 0.3 of a lateral G. Definitely a good increase there, mainly from the tires.
All right, 61.9, not too bad. So we gotta buy that there. All right, now let's see what this beast can do. Alright, you can see roughly 235, 236. Didn't back down at all, even after the road flattening out, just because of the gearing. I mean, it's just pinning red line right there in 7th gear. So I'm sure with some tuning, you can definitely get this thing to a higher top speed. I'm guessing somewhere around, I mean, definitely over 250. Um, maybe like 255, somewhere around there. Definitely has a lot of potential. It was pulling really hard on that 7th gear. Um, all in all, not a bad car. The engine sound, the engine note, I don't know. Um, it seems to perform very well the way it handles and all that. But I like to compare this car to the Senna, I guess. I don't know, because this car handles well, the Senna handles well, but the Senna handles like twice as good. <laughs> the Senna's really amazing. I mean, you really have to drive it to see. So, all in all, um, I don't really recommend this car too much. There are better options uh, out there in the game, especially with the engine sound and all that. Not a bad car, it's just, it really lacks um, the qualities that other cars have. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and here are the wheel options for the Ford GT. Let's have a